Hello, this is Jill. Welcome to the podcast. Have you ever wondered how can you stand out as a leader at work and be successful in the minds of the people around you? I'd rather regret the risks that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Simone Biles. Today, we're going to talk about RISE, three practical steps for advancing your career, standing out as a leader, and liking your life by Patty Azzarello. She was someone who worked at Hewlett Packard, and she was overlooked for promotions and new opportunities over and over again. And she started wondering, what's wrong with me? Am I just not very good? Did I make someone angry? People seem to like me. I seem to do a good job. But when people's names come up for promotions and different opportunities, it was never her name. So after this deep dive, she decided to look at what exactly was going wrong. And she made a mistake. And I think I made this mistake too about working too hard. It's the thing that we're always told work hard at your job. You'll get promoted. You'll get noticed. People will like what you do. But here's the problem. You have to be successful about what you're working on. And I gave this analogy to someone. Imagine this company was a lawnmower company and you were that person who went out and mowed more lawns than anybody else. You're great at it. You mowed this lawn. That guy called in sick. You mowed that lawn over there too. And you were the best lawnmower this company has ever seen. Are you the person who's going to get promoted? What if The person next to you is the person who always comes up with ideas about how to make the lawn mowing business better. Maybe they invest in new equipment that can mow lawns 10 times faster than they were previously being mowed before. Or they figured out a way to make the business so much better that only half the lawns have to be mowed in order to be a success. Which of you are going to get promoted? And that's where this book really comes in. I think very highly of this book. I think it's a good way of looking about what can go right and what can go wrong within our own careers. She said that people who are successful in most jobs figure out a way to do above and beyond the job description and work their way around what their job description is supposed to be and think outside the box in such a way that it makes everything better. You know, when it comes time for a promotion or it comes time for any sort of advancement in a company, you think, well, I'm really good at what I do. I work really hard. Chances are there's a lot of people in your company who are really good at what they do and they work really hard. They probably have a lot of great talent and a lot of great skill. But what is it that's going to make you highlighted beyond what they're doing? She said that when you look at people who get promoted is, first of all, they're good at what they do and they seem to be doing something that suits them personally. I have seen people in the work world who are fantastic at their jobs and they hate it. Hire out on the very tasks they're told to do. Someone who's put in charge of new strategies and they're pretty good at it, but it takes everything out of them. So it's not just that you're great at your job and you have good skills, but it's at something that's truly you coming out. They're not just doing the job as the job description is written. They're taking on other challenges. They're helping other people. They're going beyond just what their job is doing and trying to have a bigger, wider impact in the company than just what their job would give them. They also seem to have great networks. They know people. They know a lot of people. And a lot of people know them. They also get a lot of respect from not only the people around them, their coworkers, the bosses, the leadership of the company but maybe their customers and other people who think very highly of them. (laughs) She says, too, that they fail more than most people. They hear a lot of no's. They get rejected a lot. But you know why that is? They keep going. They keep learning and they keep trying new things. Failing at a particular project is a lesson. And she said they do stuff. It's not always dramatic, but they're always right there at the core of every idea doing something important. Most of the people who make true impacts in their company, they were never really there for the money. Of course, we all work for the money. We have to pay our bills. We have to do things. We want to have great vacations. But they actually got real satisfaction from their families, from their outside life, but also from their work life. So she has an approach, and we're going to talk about all three of these. So she talks about do better, look better, and connect better. So we're going to cover 
some of this in the first podcast, and then we're going to continue the rest of it in the next podcast, because this information is really dense in helping us gaining the recognition and the projects you really want to do. This is on a small scale. This is on a large scale. Don't just think about this as I'm trying to become an executive in my company. Think of this as I'm trying to get to the job I'm going to really love inside my company. So the first is do better. And that's just about making great results. You want to make sure that whatever it is you're working on is really successful, that you're getting progress, that even if you get stuck or you fall behind, in the end, the project works really well. And so the question is, what can you do in order to do better? And the first step of it, and I think this is where I tended to go wrong quite a bit, is I like to gut things out. Oh, I have this hard project. I'm just going to work on it day and night and I am going to get it done. I'm going to do what is expected of me to get this project done no matter what happens. I make it happen. And that isn't always the best answer because if you use all your time and you use all your energy and you have no bandwidth or time for anyone else or anything else, you know, you end up stalling. I'm that person, like I said, who goes out there and mows the most lawns. But the question is, how am I making the company better? What you have to do is, can you do an excellent job, but still not get stuck burning through everything in your job, the time, your energy, burning up all the people that you work with? How can you add that value to the company while still being able to improve processes and do things better? This is where you have to really remember that you can't do all the work. And part of doing better has to do with also saying no from time to time. And this is a hard one for me. I like to say yes. But you have to say no, because if your core project is getting these certain things done and you're taking on this other project and this other person and doing this other thing, it's not really winning you any benefit. You're just burning yourself out. And now you're no longer working on the thing that is most important. She also wants you to know that it's never too late to start. You can always do what it is you're trying to do at any time. And it pays off at any time. It always is about setting the bar higher. So the first step is to do better. The second step is to look better. And then the last step is how to connect better. So the first step to doing better, she said that the first thing you have to realize is you can't become better if you're over busy, out of energy, and out of time. You need to be less busy. So you have more time to do what's actually important in this project. That's the most important thing. You will have to realize that no one at the company has time to really look at the job you're doing, what you're doing, how busy you are. If you won't tell people, if you are swamped, you have to tell people. If you're buried under and you can't make time for this project, you have to communicate on this. I know that we believe that our bosses are looking at everything we do and analyzing it, but they also have jobs that have nothing to do with us. And so we have to realize our first step in doing better is evaluating our own situation and communicating about it. If you're working day in and day out, night after night, probably no one's noticing and no one's going to help save you unless you start working on saving yourself. And just remember that getting all these things accomplished may not be actually adding value to your job, to your company, to your team. You have to actually improve things. You have to make things better. Maybe you're that person who's mowing more lawns than everyone, which is great. You're making money. Everyone's impressed by how many lawns you mow. But in the end, you're never improving the place. You're never improving the situation. You're not getting new customers. And therefore, your output is just a lot. It's just not the right thing. So you need to make sure that you'll focus on your time, but you also focus on where are your efforts going? Are they going to the most important thing? Or are you doing hard work and doing it every day and doing a wonderful job of it while not moving the ball forward? And a lot of people think about being selfless. I'm going to help everyone. I'm going to help do everything. I'm going to help everyone on the team. And that shows me to be a team player. Besides the fact that you're a helpful person, but you cannot do everything. You cannot help on every project. The question is, can you limit what you're doing to the things that's important for you to do 
and then get rid of some of the projects that you don't have to be involved in, you don't have to be doing, and it doesn't require your attention. So you'll have to become relentless when it comes to actually managing your workload. You cannot do everything. And you'll notice that successful bosses and executives in your company, they don't do everything. (laughs) There's a lot of times they'll drop the ball, they'll forget what they told you, but that's because they're not paid to be your official juggling assistant. They're paid to actually get their own jobs done and they're really focused on that. And they too are human beings and sometimes they get overburdened and sometimes they won't have time to even do the things they've agreed to. So the best thing that you need to do is understand which work you need to do, but not do all of it. You cannot do all of it. We talked about this in episode three, Ruthlessly Eliminate Noise. And that was a book about essentialism. How can you cut down on some of the things that are not important in your life or not important in your job so that you can actually tackle the things that are really important? And so when you think about people who stand out on your team or stand out inside of your company, To me, I always thought it was the person that worked hardest. I thought it was that the bosses see you there late. They see you early in the morning, that you're getting all this stuff done. But the people who actually do really stand out are the people who are thinking ahead, doing the right projects that are for them and not slipping up and burying themselves into the things that are either not strategic or not something they have to do. They step up and they become better thinkers and they impress everyone around them because of their thinking. She suggests that you keep a list of everything your boss asks for, that you keep a list of all the strategic priorities. Maybe those are the goals that you pick on your own performance review the prior year, or maybe those are the things that your team picked as strategic priorities for your team. Have regular meetings with your boss where you go over this list. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed. I took out my list of all the different projects I said yes to, and maybe I should not have said yes to them all. And we went through them to see if we could clean them up a bit. Which things must I be involved in? Make recommendations about what the biggest priorities are. What things that you're specifically good at? Why should you do these things instead of these other things? Maybe because they're not as important to the business or maybe because there's other people who are good at those things too who could help you. And then she says that when you show your boss your list of all the things that you have to do, maybe they don't even know that they asked you to do that many things. You also win because you have kept track of all the things you were asked to do and not let those things slide, fall off your list, or you just never even tackled them because you never even remembered them. Just the fact that you kept a list of all these things will help you win trust and help them know you're listening. And then you'll be able to negotiate your time and your projects so that you'll be able to rank order them. What I've always tried to do, and I learned this years ago, is I go in with my list of things that I have to do if I'm feeling particularly overwhelmed or I'm given a new task and I say, okay, great. I'm really interested in this task. I think I have a lot of skills that would help this task do really well. This is my list of current activities. Which things can we get rid of in order for me to have time to do this new thing? You'll be able to go through that list smartly and you'll look great because you proactively talked about the list instead of trying to do it all, failing at it all, and looking like you made a mess of it. So one thing that you have to realize is that oftentimes you will not be able to do everything on your list. So she asked the question, is it better to fail at 30% of the list or is it better to fail at 40% of the list and give yourself the ability to score a huge win on your other project that was deemed most important. It is most important that you win on the big projects more than it is that you failed on some of the minor projects. And so she said the way that you build ruthless priorities is to, first of all, identify what matters the most to the business. Again, those might be some of the strategic goals of you, your company, or your team. Choose your priorities. What do you think is a priority? And then focus on what you're actually able to do, what you're doing, and don't worry about the things that you're not getting done right now. Go over that list with your boss and then make sure that whenever you give a project time, it's not 100% of your time. You cannot work 100% of the time. Not only that, there's all sorts of other things that go on in a company, right? There's different types of trainings you have to do just to be a member of your community. 
There's other types of forms you have to fill out and other meetings you have to attend. You cannot assign 100% of your time to all the important projects. You have to make sure that you have time to do the other things. But not only that, that you have time to think, sit down, plan without doing something, what your next day is going to look like, what the rest of the project's going to look like, what your other projects are going to look like. You really have to limit how much time even your most important projects take of your week. She says that you have to really try to avoid any pressure that gets placed on you to either take on more projects or do your old projects that puts the main project at risk. When you've been given a main project that's so important, you need to go with it. And then she says it's important, and I agree with this totally, over-communicate. If there's something that's not going to get done, if there's a chance that you're going to not mean the due date, that has to be communicated. Nothing is worse than blindsiding your boss. You have to make sure that you communicate all the time about getting them done. And if it's not going to happen, communicate that it's not going to happen. And then it's just really important to finish those projects. People will notice if you don't finish a project or you let it just lapse and never do it. So make sure that that happens. And this is a big thing for us and my company is that we recognize and celebrate. If we did a good job, if we finished a project, if we had a team of people who helped us with this project, we have to celebrate that success. And sometimes there are places where you think something's a bigger priority. You go in and you try to convince your boss that you think that this is more important, that this should be taking up your time, that you should be working on that. And sometimes you'll win and the boss will see that you're right. This other project you're working on is strategic thinking that's going to change the way this company works. But sometimes the boss might not agree with you and you'll have to accept that decision because in the end, your boss is the person who knows about what leadership demands there are, who knows what the bigger picture sometimes are. Maybe they know who are the people who are expecting this project to get done and there might be things you don't know. So in the end, if you and your boss disagree on priorities, your boss will have to win on that. And one thing that you have to look at when you're trying to work on these projects that you're doing is to make sure, too, that you're not just focusing on the project. You're not just focusing on even the people who are involved in it, but you have to really focus on what is the deliverable outcome of this? Is it possible that you could disappoint someone in the project and still have a success with that project? Is there a way that maybe you can work around some of the ways that the project could fail, or maybe this particular aspect does fail, but the overall outcome has been maintained. Again, if you don't really know what the why is behind this project, you could risk actually getting parts of this project done on time and miss the whole point. She talks about hiding so that if you have time in your schedule that you make sure you block off time, but sometimes you also have to hide. And that might mean that you get away, you work in a remote office. I know sometimes in my office, if there's a manager who's not going to be there for the day, they open up their office so we can work quietly there. But make sure that whatever you need to do in order to get that time, whether it's either blocking out the time so people can't schedule meetings with you or hiding, you'll be able to get those projects done. She said that we're always on in the world right now and that we always feel we have to respond to every email and every person who contacts us. And, you know, it never was that way in the work world. We got through thousands of years of the business world without having to be perpetually connected to our emails, our phones, everything else like that. So if there are times when you have to shut off your phone, not look at your email so that you can focus on your project, sometimes you can do that or be selectively responsive. So you don't have to respond to every email you get. Sometimes you can respond to some of the emails that you get. She asks people to put a list together of the things that you're definitely going to do, some of the things that you're thinking about not doing, and the things that you know will never be able to get to them so that you have to make sure you understand what is in each bucket so that you can put yourself into a position so that you can limit your time to the best possible way. She says it's important for us to build trust when it comes to our other coworkers. And trust is important because if your coworkers don't trust you, if your boss doesn't trust you, if the leadership in your company doesn't trust you, 
people won't give you the good projects where you can really sink your teeth into them. You will be worried about whether your job is at risk because you know that nobody trusts you. The people around you, if they do trust you, they will be more motivated to help you. They will know that you'll get things done and they'll be giving you more energy to help you be successful if they trust you. So make sure that you build trust and you build trust by being yourself, that you're actually doing the projects that you're good at, that you're not being inconsistent and changing your mind all the time. She said that inconsistency is damaging to the trust that we build up with leadership because if we do a great job most of the time, ooh, now they don't trust us to do a job well all the time. So our inconsistency makes it so people really can't trust the work we're going to do, can't really trust the ideas that we have. And she said that being consistently inconsistent is worse than just being consistently bad. It's one thing if you're a bad employee, it's a whole other where you're great on one project and you're terrible on the next project and people can't trust you. Once you've lost that level of trust, it is impossible for anyone to really give you anything better when it comes to projects at work or promotions at work. And so make sure that you're consistent with the things that are important, even if that means you do less things but you're consistently good at them. Make sure that you keep communicating. That will help build trust. You never let your boss get blindsided. I know I've always been this person that if I had an angry customer, I'm the first person in my boss's office to tell them, just so you know, customer's really mad at me. I made a mistake. And your boss will appreciate the fact that they're not getting blindsided by this angry customer. And it's important that you're straightforward, even if it is that you screwed up, even if it is that your customer is very angry. Summary, go above and beyond your job description. Do what needs to be done and make sure your job suits you. Two, ruthlessly pair your priorities. You can't do everything. And if you get tied up doing the projects and the tasks that don't matter, you'll never get time to do the ones that really do matter and the ones that put your company and your career ahead. Two, keep a priority list. Make sure that you always build in time buffers so you have time to think and plan and then actually do the important work. Three, protect your important projects. Over-communicate anytime something goes wrong, goes right, or you need help from your boss and other people in your company. Make sure you finish those important projects first. Four. Hide physically and digitally. Find some way of getting into a quiet space, a place where people can't find you, or a place where you don't automatically respond to your phone, to Slack, to other messaging devices. Make sure you get time to concentrate. And then build trust in your community, at work, with your bosses, with your coworkers. When they learn they can trust you, that's when the good projects will come your way. Challenge. Try to spend at least one hour in pure silence, whether it's from distractions, noises, or digital signals that try to steal your attention, and try building that up. It's hard to concentrate, but start small. Use this experiment as a way of seeing whether good focus time could improve your productivity. And our fun entertainment quote of the day comes from Kevin Klein in the movie Dave. If you've ever seen the look on somebody's face the day that they finally get a job, I've had some experience with this. It, they look like they could fly. And, and it's not about the paycheck. It's about respect. It's about looking in the mirror and knowing that you've done something valuable with your day. And if one person can start to feel that way, and then another person and another person, then pretty soon all these other problems that we're facing may not seem so impossible. You don't really know how much you can do until you stand up and decide to try. He tells us what a job is really about. And boy, was that good advice. And it's such a cute movie. I really enjoyed watching it. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic week. And remember to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, or leave comments to me on smallstepspod.com. There's a contact form up there and you can let me know if you have any questions or feedback for me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.